Yo, what's up guys? So this is the new Apple keyboard with trackpad from Apple. Now this device specifically was released alongside the 2020 iPad Pro, but just in case you didn't know, it can be used with the 2018 iPad Pro model without any sort of drawbacks or loss of functionality. So just wanna make sure that you guys knew that, but in today's video, I'm going to give you my first impressions. And if you want to see uh, more of like a long-term review, make sure to get subscribed as that will be coming soon. So with that said, let's get into my first impressions here, starting with weight. Okay, so as far as weight goes, the smart keyboard here is just over one and a half pounds by itself. When you add the iPad, and uh, that's obviously its intended use, um, it gets heavier than a MacBook Air. It's only 0.1 pounds over the weight of the MacBook Air, but I just found that to be a little bit significant given the MacBook Air was already so light. But that leads us to our next topic here, weight distribution. Obviously with a MacBook Air, you have battery, CPU, and everything like that on the bottom, and the screen up here on the top is very light. Unfortunately with um, iPad setups, iPad workstations, the iPad is always going to be the heaviest item. Apple has done a really good job with weight distribution on this model. The previous smart keyboard that I had was not good at all with weight distribution and it always tipped over. And actually my iPad had a lot of scratches on it because of that. That was the 10.5 inch iPad Pro that I had just a few years ago. So I'm actually really excited to see kind of this new design and how Apple has manufactured this to be a lot more uh, kind of lenient with weight distribution. I think in the future, if they added maybe a battery pack on the bottom to kind of extend the battery life of the iPad, maybe they could uh, kind of push the curve even more towards better weight distribution in the future. Now, build quality. The build quality is amazing. Uh, the hinge on this thing is really, really sturdy. If you go ahead and try to move the hinge, it's very, very sturdy. It's not going to move around, uh, you know, willy nilly. It's not going to be able to be manipulated very easily. Uh, the magnets on the back that hold the iPad to the smart case um, are actually really, really strong, just like what we saw before, so nothing really different there. And the keyboard design, uh, the keyboard design is a lot better. Metal construction, the keys actually press in, they're actually scissor switches, and the trackpad feels really, really nice, like what you would see on a MacBook MacBook Air or MacBook Pro device. So let's move on to the keyboard here because that's obviously a huge uh, kind of topic when it comes to the overall experience of using this device. And the keyboard, as I said, is a scissor switch design. So you're essentially getting the same uh, keyboard that you saw on the MacBook Air just released and then obviously the 16 inch MacBook Pro that was released late last year. Uh, so I really like the keyboard. The typing experience is actually really, really good. Obviously, since you have the same keyboard, the typing experience should be that good. And it's just miles apart from what Apple has uh, kind of developed previously with their smart keyboards where the keys were very, very spongy and really not good to type on. You'd mistype a bunch of things and it was just not a very good experience. This pushes it closer, actually almost all the way on a typing experience to the uh, MacBook or MacBook Air lineup. I'm really loving this keyboard. Also with the keyboard, you have backlighting, so that's really good for um, any nighttime kind of work that you may be doing where you don't want a ton of lights on. Um, you can always adjust the backlight via software. So in iPadOS, you can go into the settings app, adjust the backlight if you want it higher, but typically it's just uh, kind of based upon the iPad sensor, um, which also controls the auto brightness for the iPad, and that will control the backlight as well. So it's automatically uh, kind of um, controlled with your iPad, which is actually really good just because you don't have to do anything manually. Okay, so let's talk about the USB-C port on the left-hand side. Typically when you plug in your iPad, um, to get full charging speeds, you have to go through this USB-C port um, on the bottom of the iPad. It doesn't look too great, obviously. It just strings across the screen here. It's not a very good experience. But now Apple has added that option to install or um, place your USB-C cable directly into the smart keyboard itself and that can actually charge your iPad at 100% speeds. So that means the charge going from the cable to the uh, little like hinge on the back here through the smart connector to your iPad, 100% the same as going directly from your wall 
to the iPad. So that's very impressive that the charging speeds are exactly the same going through that smart connection. And what that tells us is actually in the future, we might be seeing a lot more products with that smart connector for charging, data transfer, whatever it may be. But I thought that was an interesting point that I thought you guys might want to know just because, um, you know, this looks a lot better than plugging it into your iPad and function wise, it actually makes good use of this smart keyboard. Now, the main question that I have with this keyboard is, does this bring the iPad experience closer to that of a computer? The answer is yes, it's closer, just not all the way. Obviously, I mentioned weight distribution earlier, the weight distribution is still a little bit off, but if you go ahead and take your laptop and press the screen like this, it's the exact same thing. It's going to move pretty much the same um, amount as your iPad. It's, I feel like the only thing that Apple could improve upon is the weight distribution on the bottom. If you have this in your lap, it can get a little bit wobbly, not as wobbly as the previous generation smart keyboard, but it still can just wobble a little bit where the MacBook or MacBook Pro would be very solid in your lap. So that's the only thing, the only complaint I have with this smart keyboard is kind of the weight distribution. As far as viewing angles, Apple has greatly improved viewing angles. I really love the design of that hinge on the backside there. And they've done a really good job thinking about kind of all the angles that people would want and um, what works functionality wise. So. Thumbs up to Apple on a very good design here. Okay, so obviously that was the hardware perspective, but what about software? Is this working well software-wise? Well, not all the time. Uh, take for instance, many users out there on a Mac use Command Q to quit out of a program and close it. That's not really available to you on this keyboard quite yet. You still have to press Command H to go home, or if you absolutely want to use Command Q, you have to go into the app switcher and then perform that function to quit out of the apps that you want to. So that's a little bit of a quirk with the overall operation, that being that not all functions work across the devices like the MacBook over to the iPad Pro, but I imagine that Apple will be trying to kind of mesh everything down the line via software updates. Now, of course, if you are a smart keyboard pro or you've never actually used a keyboard with your iPad, you can just press down on the command key to get a little bit more information on the commands available to you. But it will still be an adjustment coming from a Mac experience over to the iPad with this keyboard. Now, one thing that I would recommend if you had, if you like really love the feel of a MacBook is that you turn off the cursor animations in the settings app. That will ensure that the cursor isn't attaching to different UI elements around your screen, which is unlike the experience that you obviously have on a Mac where the cursor is just a little bit more free. But okay guys, so it's time to wrap it up here. Those were my first impressions and the first things that I noticed specifically with this 12.9 inch model of the smart key keyboard with trackpad. Again, if you want to see a full review on this thing, definitely get subscribed and hit that notification bell button to get updates on when that content is released. If you by chance cannot wait and you want an answer now on if you should buy it, I'd say commit yourself to working full time off of your iPad Pro and it's a very good buy. This thing is way too expensive at $350 to be used with your iPad and then a MacBook Pro on the side or MacBook on the side. So I will say that it is perfect for students, business workers, and even creatives as well. So if you fit into those categories, I doubt you'll be hard pressed to find a use for it. You just really have to commit to using this keyboard to make it worthwhile and worth the money uh, that you spend on it because again, $350 is quite a hefty price tag for just a keyboard. But okay guys, that's it for today's video. Before you head out, make sure to follow me on Twitter for any updates to the channel. And of course, you can join our Discord forum where we talk more in depth on what we feature here on the channel. But anyways, thank you all for watching and hopefully I see you in some upcoming content. But until then, I hope you all have an awesome day.